Well, hello everyone and welcome to another complete growing guide here on the Emma Garner channel. In today's growing guide, we're going to be talking about peppers. Peppers are a very easy plant to grow, but until you've grown them successfully, you really don't know how easy it is. And that's because there's a lot of small things that can go wrong. It's really not a hard plant to grow, but when you do those small little things wrong, it can lead to a less than successful pepper harvest later on. So hopefully this episode is going to clear up those tiny little things that might be going wrong and get you on your way to having a successful harvest. The first thing you're going to want to make sure is that you either start them in a greenhouse or go to get them at a greenhouse. The reason is because oftentimes people want to start them from seed in ground. And that is a huge mistake. The reason is because when you wait, sometimes you wait till the soil temperature is right, and that's after about a month or two after your last frost. But then depending on what you're trying to start, maybe bell pepper seeds take about five to nine days, or maybe you're trying to start something like habaneros or buccalochias, those can take up to a month. So you have a case in which you've already waited two, day, or two months, and then you're waiting up to another month. So that's three months out of your growing season just spent getting a plant to be up and growing. So that can be very, very discouraging to someone that's doing that because you, you basically spend all of your growing season just trying to get a plant started. And then once they do sprout, it takes between 50 and 80 days to actually get ripe fruit. So you don't want to do that because it's just going to waste all of your time only to get nothing. So what we have here is some healthy plants we started in our greenhouse about four weeks before our last frost date. And that's going to give us a really good head start on our growing season. Now the next thing is making sure the soil temperature is warm. We touched on it a little bit earlier in the episode, but you want to make sure that the soil temperature is between 55 and 65 degrees. And that's because warmer soils are better for peppers. Peppers are a tropical plant, and tropical plants obviously like those warmer weather, that warmer temperature. So if you try to start them and you put them in the ground when it's you know, high 30s or low 40s, mid 40s, anything like that that's still considered cool or cold soil is going to stunt the plant. And a stunted plant means less harvest because it's going to be a smaller plant, also less fruit, and it's going to just look like a stunted, pathetic plant. However, if you wait for the soil to be warm, it's not going to go through any transplant shock in terms of temperature goes. So you're going to have a much better start to your season if you just wait a few more weeks till your soil temperatures warm up. The next thing that kind of goes along with soil temperature is the amount of sun they get. So peppers are also a plant that you don't want them getting too hot because if they get too hot, they're actually going to start dropping their flowers and drop flowers means drop fruit in the end, which ultimately leads to less harvest. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to plant them in a place that gets between five and eight hours of full sun. Any more than that in the peak season of late July, early August, when it's really hot, you're going to find that the peppers will drop some of their fruit if you get any more than five to eight hours of sun because they just get overexposed and it ends up stressing the plant out. So that five to eight hours is going to give you just enough to make sure they're not, not not getting enough sun, but not too much that they're dropping their fruit. Also, make sure that the sunlight is a very strong full sun though. You don't want to plant them under a tree that might get filtered sun. Pepper plants need a very full strong sun, but they just don't need a lot of it. So no more than eight hours and you're going to be fine. The last thing before we start planting is the soil. The soil we're using is a compost blend. It's just a mixture of sand, a little bit of topsoil, and mostly compost. And that's going to give us a very loose, airy, fluffy mix. Oftentimes people don't give the right soil mixtures to their pepper plants, and pepper plants are something that's really going to surprise you when you actually do it successfully, how large the roots go out. Because you need at least a square foot per plant in order to get all of the available nutrients and water that's required to have a successful pepper plant. So oftentimes people might, they might not have a good soil, or they might overcrowd, and which we'll get to in spacing in a little bit. But you, make, you want to make sure that you have that square foot so they can take up all that available nutrients, all that available water, and then that way they can get up to a really great healthy plant for you. So let's start planting now, and then we'll talk about some other tips in a little bit. So when it comes to pepper plants, I never space mine any less than a foot and a half apart. I treat them just like tomatoes. Pepper plants, they can be grown a foot apart, 
but I find that a foot apart is just not enough for me. When I have a really successful, a really beautiful, healthy pepper plant, it takes up every inch of that foot and a half. So I like to give them a foot and a half and a foot and a half. That way they have a great, great growing space where they're not gonna be crowded out by anything and they can really just do their thing to the best of their abilities. So in this bed here, we're talking three feet long. And so I'll put a plant here and a plant here. Now talking about soil pH, if that's something that you like to get into, pepper plants don't like an overly acidic pH. They like a pH, not like tomatoes that like at 5.5, but they also, they don't like it to be super acidic. They, they like it to be around a six to a 6.5, just barely acidic. And now you'll notice what I did when I planted this pepper plant is I did not bury it super deep. Oftentimes people treat them just like tomatoes and that's a really common mistake is that there is an urban legend out there or a, you know, an old wives tale that says, oh, if you plant peppers like tomatoes, they'll, plant, they'll put out roots all along the stem. And that's just not true. The reason is because pepper plants are in fact in the Solanense family, just like tomatoes, eggplants, tomatillos, but you'll notice that they don't have the hair all along the stem like tomatoes do. And so what you're going to find is that when you bury them deeper, it's really actually going to hamper the growth. And I'm not quite sure why, and a lot of people have not been able to answer this, but I think it has something to do with the fact that the soil actually kind of girdles the stem and doesn't allow the, the plant to actually expand the stem. And when you, the stem expands, it actually will help more, more nutrient uptake, more water uptake, and that can have a larger, healthier plant. Years that I've experimented with burying them, even two inches, three inches up the plant, the plant actually gets stunted and has less flowers and fruit than one that isn't buried deep. So that's why you really just wanna plant them at soil level. Now the next thing that I wanna talk about with peppers is it comes to pruning. Oftentimes people wanna prune their pepper plant. That is totally fine if you wanna do so and I would highly recommend it. I don't prune my pepper plants because you will find that depending on your growing season, you may not wanna prune. Pruning a pepper plant will in fact help lower the center of gravity so it'll be, a less, uh, it'll be less easy to snap. It will in fact start bushing out a lot like tomatoes, but you wanna make sure you have a long enough growing season because when you eliminate the top growing stem, it takes a while for them to push side shoots and then those side shoots have to grow out as well in order to fruit. So it's something that you have to do with your own personal, it's your own personal opinion on what you do. I don't, however you can, if you have a long enough growing season. And the very last thing we're going to talk about is soil nutrients. When it comes to fertilizing peppers, you want to give them a very good all-purpose fertilizer. I've sprinkled in some of our trifecta in here and amended, this, amended it all into the bed. But when it comes to pepper plants, if you're not using trifecta, you want to use something that's pretty all balanced. You don't want a fertilizer that's going to be favoring any nutrients. So if let's say it's really high in, let's say it's really high in nitrogen, that's going to be a problem because the amount of nitrogen in the soil is going to directly have an effect on the plant. If it's really green, you're giving it too much nitrogen because a pepper plant does not need to be a super dark green. The, the, leaves, of the, the leaves of the pepper plant should be a light to kind of a, a, a lime green. You don't want them to be a deep forest green. That just means they're getting far too much nitrogen and it's going to be growing more than it's fruiting. And so you might have a really healthy plant. In the end, it's gonna be large, but how much fruit are you getting? And that's really what matters. The next thing is phosphorus. You don't wanna have a whole ton of phosphorus in the soil either, or a, or a fertilizer that favors phosphorus more or less, because that's going to just give you a lot of fruit, but the plant won't really grow. And the thing is, is that a, a taller plant that also fruits is going to be better than a smaller plant that has tons of fruit because the plant also needs to be able to sustain the amount of fruit that it's putting out. So it kind of need, they kind of need to go hand in hand. The last thing is obviously potassium. Potassium kind of does the same thing as nitrogen and you don't want too much potassium either because it will again make the leaves really green and it will prevent the plant from producing any flowers because it's going to be just, it's going to be almost too healthy 
and that is going to affect the amount of fruit that comes on your pepper plants. So I typically go with a very balanced all natural organic fertilizer for my plants. A 555 will be fine, a 777, even something like like a 10 12 10. You know what I mean? Something something that's just not going to be favoring too much in any of the categories of the NPK. And the last thing we have to do is just water these in. Now when you're watering pepper plants, the amount of water you give them does not have to be a torrential drenching. They do not need to be that wet all the time. Pepper plants are actually some of the plants that can be a little more drought tolerant. When you, when you water plant all the time, it can actually stress the plant out. And if you've ever seen your leaves curling downwards or up, sometimes they curl up, sometimes they curl down, but oftentimes when they curl, it's caused by something called pepper leaf eodema. And that is actually an overwatering of the plant. The, the cells in the, in the plant leaf will actually expand and swell and it will cause the leaf to bow downwards. And, uh, and that actually can stress the plant and cause harm to uh, fruit and flower production as well. So you just wanna make sure that you let them dry out in between waterings. You do not need to water them all the time and it's going to lead to a far healthier and far more successful pepper plant. So I thank you all for tuning in for this growing guide. Hopefully you all enjoyed, hopefully you learned something new. I do hope you have a very successful year for growing peppers. And if you do, let us know how this episode helped in the comments box below. Also, if you have any more ideas for any growing guides you'd like to see, post that in the comments box below. You can also see all the other growing guides we've ever done over at www.mlightgardener.com. Go to our video section and select growing guides, and that's going to give you a full list of all the growing guides we've done. So until next episode, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, hoping you all are growing big or going home. I'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.